little drive video today except this time I'm not gonna be one driving so the owner my friend Richie with his 2024 G80 M3 manual also on his car he just has the H&R Springs future classic spacers and he also did the Continental DWS 06 plus which we had the same tires on the Alpha so he's never driven an Alfa Romeo before just the first time he's gonna get behind the wheel of one they're two completely different cars also a lot smaller in size different power band but it's gonna be fun so come along for the drive so the seat is manual slide rich yeah so it's manual slide but then you have like a, a power height adjustment yeah how do you push it well actually no you know what this is perfect i just yeah i got it i got it you're good let me just okay all right that's good all right so how, how does the seat feel the carbon for, bucket for, for, carbon buckets i mean compare this i mean i don't have the carbon buckets in the g80 no. i have just the regular seat the g80 yeah. carbon buckets the suck the g80 carbon buckets i mean are beautiful but this night and day difference comfort wise between this and the g80 carbon buckets 100%. yeah all right so here just now okay. this has the same transmission that your um your old m340 i had okay eight speed eight speed okay so we're in dynamic mode all right okay. drive it so we're just going to be in drive just so you can kind of get a feel for the car you're going to notice the steering it's very very sharp it's very very responsive but it doesn't feel it doesn't feel that tight i mean like compared to mine it's funny because you said that this is a lot tighter than my g80 well the chassis in terms is. of like steering feet yeah you'll, you'll feel. well you gotta make it right you gotta make um once you start putting you know in driving it it gets a little oh, tighter okay, okay. I mean, this. I tell you one thing. The sound is night and day. I mean, this isn't. You know, and this is this, bone stock. I, this is not yeah, touched. It's got the sound of an exotic Italian sports car. You can't get that from yeah. a G80. You can't. I mean, my my G80 sounded good with the with the Remus race, but it was yeah, almost a, it was almost a little too extreme at times. You know. Yeah, you spend all that money on the car, right? Eighty right, plus thousand, right. and they give you a, a crappy sounding exhaust. I don't know why. It's the manufacturers. It sucks. Yep. I mean, look, people would buy those Porsches and they put those. Yep. Slow uh, particular filters. Why don't hit the guy in front of me? The brakes are definitely not as good. I mean, no. you can tell the brakes are. I mean, if and, and my G80, if I'm in sport mode, if I if I'm you know I have the the M1 and M2 configurations. If I change the braking feedback and put it into sport mode, I mean it's super responsive. No, the brake BMW. And I can tell just by here. This BMW is Mercedes, lot. in my opinion, have some of the best brakes as far oh, as the the, the pedal feel. Phenomenal. Yeah, so this car it doesn't have like you can't adjust the pedal feel mm -hmm. um, the way your car can. Like your car, you could change the pedal feel yeah. through the modes. Just it, it, it's either efficient and uh, sport, but exactly. there's a big difference though. Like if yeah. efficient mode, like it almost feels like this. Yeah. But where is it? You in sport mode, like it's razor sharp, very responsive. Which way? Go straight. Okay. Here, I'm gonna put it into manual mode. So now okay. you're gonna use drop the paddle on your left. Okay. Now you're in okay, first. In first, yep. And then you hit. The... You got it. You, yeah. You, the, you, the brakes are very very torquey. Yeah. Yeah. This engine's got very a lot of torque. Torquey. Why do people drive like that? Go up this hill. It drives me crazy. But you see, the car is nimble. Oh, yeah. Right? Sorry, go slow. <laughs> downshift. Don't worry about it. You should downshift. I'm driving for, for more than half my life. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I just, I just I fucked up there. <laughs> yeah, you got to, you know, you got to get, get used to it. To it. Oh, it has such a great sound. But you see the way, you see oh. the way. It, the uh, the torque kicks in. It's like yeah. right there. That's what you. That's what the G80 doesn't have off the top. The um, no, the manual. The, the, G, the G80 takes a little time to get going. Yeah. You know, it definitely has lag. But once it gets going on the highway, it, it flies. Oh, it flies. Totally. It does. Go straight. These pedals. And these paddles are these these sound. paddles are like Ferraris. They're mounted on the column. Yeah, They're it's not weird. on the stereo. I was just noticing that. Yeah. You, you got to get used to them. So, go left. I mean, it, it's. Uh, Almost like that that backfire when you shift. Yeah, the little pop. The little pop. Yeah, yeah. It's downshift cool. it. Downshift it. Downshift it again. See, the thing is, there's not a lot of room for you to like really open it up. To be honest, the brakes suck. <laughs> yeah. The brakes suck. That's the only downfall. Yeah. You gotta get used to them. They're which, not confidence inspiring like a German car. You can make a left. But, uh, like I was telling you before, the the uh, the carbon fiber weave. Pa I mean, you have a lot of carbon fiber, but the weave pattern is different on the uh, on the German cars. It's different. It just looks different. Yeah, they probably. You well, know, I don't know. I actually like the weave pattern better on the uh, on my car. 
This is it just different. looks a little bit more refined. The Italians do it their own way. Yeah. So look, we got the Italian flag here. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's a cool car. I love the color. Hit it. Oh yeah, it's got balls. Holy shit. <laughs> but it's not like it, it's smooth though. You know, it's yeah. linear. It's not like you know too jerky. You know, it actually has a really nice. Well, linear. it's not. It's not like the F80 M3 where when the turbo would hit in, the I, back of the car would go loose. You know, it's funny. I actually never drove the F80. I, I had a deposit on one and I pulled it out. I pulled out of the deal. I, I still like those cars. I still think they're great looking cars. Great looking cars. I like. I like the F80. They're good size. I had. A, what did I get? What's, which one did I have on order? I had the like that baby blue, like that Smurf blue. Yeah. Um, which oh, was I, really cool. I had the mineral white, the 15. I don't even remember you having that. You must have had it for like a week. Yeah, I didn't have it very long. This guy in front of me. Downshifted. Downshifted again. And now I'm really like. You see the way it's it spools up? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds good. This is a real high performance car. I mean, it's just very tight. Yeah, the chassis is now, super they tight. Feel very, it, it feels very different. But it, even though it feels very different, it's still similar in a sense that they're real tight, high. Yeah, well, they got they got good shocks, good chassis. Both yeah. very good cars. Yeah, I mean, they're, comparable. They're, very, they're definitely comparable. Yeah, very exactly. Very comparable. Uh, this is definitely faster than my G80. A lot faster. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot faster. Uh, my, low and low and like driving around town, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Because like this spools up quicker. It's funny. My car driving around town feels very nimble. Yeah. If that makes sense. But then on the highway, it's a different beast. On yeah, the, it's the highway, way it's geared it just, out. And then even like in fifth gear, like I'll step on it, I'm doing hundred like nothing. Like it just when like, I did the when I did the race chip on my G80, it almost felt like it was too much. It almost felt like it was too fast for the chassis. Yeah, that's what a lot of And it was say. it was sliding all over the road. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know, it was just to the point where the car couldn't what? hold the power down. You go straight. Okay. The car couldn't hold the power down. Brakes brakes are terrible. I'm, no, no, <laughs> you don't like them. Terrible. No, no that's good feedback. That's why I figured let's shoot a video because you've never driven one of these cars. <laughs> I'm used to it because I've been driving one for over five years. Yeah. So, you know, the start stop camera. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Ever button over there. The start stop which, button. Which that? Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. Ever since I got the G80, I'm really able to like compare it to other sport cars, which I wasn't before because now I know what a real sport car feels like. Yeah. You know, my M340 was a great car, but you know, it wasn't a real sports car. The Listen, G80 is a real, you know. That's a car. very well engineered, very well built car. You know, the complaints that a lot of people have is the size. It's it's bigger. I like the size. I mean, you know, it's know. heavier. This is this is much smaller. This is definitely more compact. Yeah. yeah. It's like the size of maybe like, well, I wouldn't say an E92. Maybe the, maybe the F80. The F80 the, I think was even bigger. Than I this. think I think this feels like an F80 in terms of the the yeah. cabin. I mean, the F80 seemed a little bit. It had a little bit. Of, you know, yep. the screen over here. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like a smaller car. I don't know. I kind of got used to it. You know, mm -hmm. I've always had, you know, I've always had the M5, the E63. I've always that had was a great the car. CTSVs. I had a lot of bigger you, you cars. You don't have that on your channel either. Which one? The, uh, the uh, your auto fanatic. You don't have that car. Well, that no, was that, was years, that was years ago. Yeah. That was the E60, right? Yeah. That was, you had like that very red interior, I remember. Yeah, that was that an awesome car, car. I remember that car felt a little like this, actually. I I, absolutely. It. You're right. Because I, when I, when some of the first videos I did on this car, I, I compared it. sound. I compared it to the E60, except this is better in local traffic, where the E60, the SMG, was clunky right. and burning gas, and it was it was just not very practical. Yeah. Um, I think this is better looking than an E60, but I think uh, it has. The, the E60 was awful. This has the, being right. This has a similar vibe to the E60. You yeah. know, it, it has like. Remember we test drove it. It has it has that like rawness to it. The sound, you that know. That was a V10, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was tight, good that suspension. We took it up to what Lime Rock? Where did we take it up in Connecticut somewhere? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> this car's got balls. Yeah. This car would be awesome in a manual. Oh my god. Well, you know it's funny. Like people in Europe say the manual is not that great. Watch out, there's cops over here. <laughs> yeah, because um, you know, because of the gearing. But I don't know. I've never driven it. Not every manual is going to be a great manual. You know, I don't think the manual in your car feels perfect. I like. I it. think the manual in like the ZL1, the Shelby, or a Porsche. It doesn't have that. High, it doesn't have that. Like yeah. It, doesn't it just feels real, better. It just feels it's, better. It's rubbery. Yeah, it's, I think anybody could agree that. But I've had so many manual transmission BMWs, so it, like to me, it's you know whatever you know. The rubbery thing for me in a performance car when I'm romping on it, I don't like that feel. Mm -hmm. And I did the short shift kit, I did the bushy mounts, I did the the weighted shifter. It made it better, but yeah. it's still you get into like the ZL11 LE right. or any of these other cars. It's there's no comparison. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. How was that? It's incredible. It's incredible, right? Yeah. Not very practical. But Supercharged, right? Yeah, Six fifty horsepower. Oh, Jesus. All right, make it right here. My buddy got, uh, I think I told you, he got a 2013 
CTSV coupe. Yeah, uh, he said the car is out of control. Dude, I had a bunch of those. He said it's great so cars. Great and he cars. came from a, a normal CTSV. I'm sorry, a normal CTS coupe. But you see how you're revving it out now and it's like kind of exciting? You get that sound? Yeah, it's nice. That's what you don't get in your car. You're really going to do an exhaust to this? Yeah, I'm going to put my resonator it's kit on next week. It's going to sound incredible. Yeah, just like my black one did. Yeah, I'm going to do the AWE uh, track catback exhaust for mine. I think it'll sound Let's good. Let's do it. We'll put it on there. Yeah, it's too grand, the one I want. It's it too gives, quiet. It gives you the black diamond tips too. I have chrome tips on mine, which looks stupid. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little there too shouldn't quiet. Be any, there shouldn't be any chrome. Yeah, my car is too quiet. It sounds good if you have it. Like if I have the M2 mode, I, you know. Have How do you fit in the seat in this car? Perfect. You know, like for for a carbon bucket, it's comfortable. Very. Right. No, I mean, like with the M3, the carbon buckets, they really hug you. Yeah, and then they I'm get so the, glad I didn't get no, those. No, they're, they're horrible, those seats. Yeah, I like the Alcantara. This is Alcantara. Right? This, has got, this has got just the right enough support where you can get in and out of it, and you can sit in it all day, and it doesn't hurt your back. Right. And I'm in the car a lot, you know, in, in and out. I can't be hurting oh, my it's hip. It's actually a good daily driver, too. It's an awesome daily driver. Oh, shit, no, I, I shipped it way too. I read well, you got to get used to it, you I know? I redlined that's it. A, yeah, that's that's, that's one complaint I have in this car is being that it's turbo yeah. you hit the red line so quick yeah whereas like if this was a ferrari like a v12 like um an f12 or an e12 gts you have that higher red line so you can kind of extract the power more right. that's right. the one thing that i dislike is that this thing builds the power so quick and then you, you realize you're redlining you have yeah to shift and you're like oh shit so you have to really live with the car for a while to really understand when the shift yep. you know by either by listening mm -hmm. to it or watching the gauge but um that's the only disadvantage with a turbocharged car. Right. Is, did you did you know that the G80, if you're low on gas, like under, I think, 25 miles, um, it actually resets the rev limiter to like around 3,000 RPMs? I didn't know that. So if you're shifting, and if, if you're not really paying attention, and you're accelerating first gear, so you feel the car, and then you realize that you're redlining it. Really? It resets the rack, which I think is a very stupid feature. They might be doing it for fuel economy. Um, yeah, but I think it's a stupid feature. Now, I want to see if there's a way to disable that. You probably could with the Bimmer it's code very, and all it's that. It's very stupid. Yeah. It's a very stupid. Oh, thing. you know, I might, I still might have my module, my programming module for the G80. Right, right. I'll give it to you. Go straight, straight up there. Okay. I'll give it to you because I don't need it. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to do anything. I know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my G80 had the check engine light, and they, the dealership couldn't fix it for, I'm, for I'm months. I'm afraid to, to, to mess around with the engine computer at all. Do you remember my my A4? When oh I yeah, did the, uh, <laughs> you did the APR, APR chip. <laughs> it blew up the turbo, the downpipe, the turbo, everything, and, and I, I, yeah, that, that car broke down. It was actually black smoke was coming from the hood. I was like, oh my, I thought it was gonna explode. Voided the warranty. I had to spend about twenty five hundred dollars out of my pocket to fix it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they gave me a hard time. I mean, you know, ever since then, I was kind of traumatized when it comes to doing any kind of ECU tuning. Well, the new, the newer cars, you got to be careful. They're so complex. You know. Yeah, and I know the G eighty. If you you do a what is it, Choose Box, I think it's Well, called? no, the, the G80, in order to do the real tune, you got to send it to, like, Russia or Ukraine. Yeah, they unlock it, and then you got to have somebody tune it. Yeah. But it's a pain. It's a lot of money, and yeah. you, you don't need that. Yeah. You, know, you don't need that. What I like about this car over my G80 is, like you said, it's got immediate power. Like, yeah. around town, it's very fast. My car is The very, throttle response is, is my, more immediate than this. My car is very nimble around town, but, uh, but once you take it on the highway, it really opens up. Yeah. You know? It's not super torquey. I mean, it is, but... This is torquey. Yeah, the, the, but the, uh, yeah. But I mean, dude, when when I did the, the race chip level three on my G80, it was so freaking fast. No, I know. Dude, I couldn't I couldn't keep the power down. Even in third, first, second, third gear, we're spinning all over the road. You clutch like that too, right? Yeah, I, I got a fault code for that too. Yep. <laughs> I was beating on yep. it. I was like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't keep this in the car long term. Yeah. I don't think the clutch can handle it, um, can handle the power. You know, I think that's why they didn't make the competition with a, a manual. Yeah. I, think, I think that's the reason, right? I think they that, really should have. I think they should. Yeah, make you know what? Make a right. What the hell is going if on? If you here? can, wait, wait. Let this Lexus go. All right. All right. Make a right. It's a hell of a car, though. I tell you that. This is a really. They're honestly, they're both very. It's a good comparison car. It's yeah. a good car to compare. I mean, the G80 oh, offers. You know, the G80 offers a lot more options and more mm -hmm. more MSRP. You know, all you What's get the, the MSRP on this about ninety. This was ninety three. All right, mine's eighty eighty almost eighty two. Yeah. But I you know what's weird is like they, they sort of compare them and then they don't compare them because A, the G80 is a lot bigger, it's a lot heavier, and it's also a lot more expensive when you spec this out. I think out. it's a good, I think, you know, uh, what, Car and Driver, who are those Look guys? Up. Those guys that do all those videos. Yeah, car and Driver, Motor Train, you watch any of those reviews. I, see, I, they, they should compare this. Well, this car, years. even though it's been out since like 2017, it has, yeah. they still say it's one of the best high performance oh, sedans ever made. I think this and the G80 are the two like best, and probably the, uh, the Blackwing too. 
I've never driven. Yeah, that the Blackwing is the Blackwing. You've driven. You've driven. Yeah, I came close, dude. I came so close to buying that car, but the turnoff and I did a video on my channel. They didn't want to deal on. They, they were trying to sell me a Blackwing for ninety-five grand yeah, when the MSRP that's... was seventy-nine. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm like, see, BMW doesn't do that. Westchester BMW never does that. Never over sticker. Yeah, um, we, that's the reason why I bought mine and you bought yours too. But I would say this car, the G80 and the and the CT4 Blackwing are probably like the those, only the, three, those are the three high performance yeah. sedans out on the market now. The ones worth considering. Yeah. And what else is there? There's really nothing. No, the AMG is dead. AMG is the, they destroyed that. The four cylinder hybrid. Hi hybrid, come on. What Listen, it's got it's got the power. If you look at the numbers, it's fast. Oh yeah. Are right, you see how he just hit that bump and how yeah. how stable the car stayed? When you had the eye box in your G80, you remember how it was, so it was how, bouncing? So, so how, did, how does the uh, H&R feel compared to the eye box that I had? A lot better, right? Dude, it's a night and day difference. The I, I'm bottoming out, though. With them. You are bottoming out? Yeah. Really? Speed bumps. What I have to do is I have to crawl well, over no. the speed bump and go like diagonal. Make left. What you got to do is you got to put it in the Sport Plus mode whenever yeah. you're approaching a speed bump. Okay. Just so it stops the compression from coming oh, down too I much. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. That's what I do. I bottomed out. I can't even tell you how many times I bottomed yeah. out already. But it's considerably lower in the front. Yeah. Now look, this road is bumpy, but look how tight the car is. You feel it in the chassis? It's, bu it's bumpier than it's bumpier than the, than the G80. That's for yeah. Sure. It's also a smaller wheelbase. Mm -hmm. But it's tight. But yeah, it, it's it's a real high performance car. Yeah. This is no joke. This car. I would love to see a comparison between the G80, CT4 Blackwing, and this. Yeah. Nobody's really done a full blown no, modern it. review of it. I don't know. Nobody does it. Now the advantage to the CT4 V Blackwing. Okay, is it's got the best manual? Uh, you know, it blows away your manual. Really? But now the engine, I think in this is probably the best in its class. If you were going to compare all three cars, yeah. as far as the sound and the torque and everything. But then again, your engine is freaking no joke too. When you modify that thing, it's a monster. Yep. I got to be honest though, to the steering, it's not night and day over my G80. It's different. It's a little heavier. It's a little heavier. It's a little, heavier, a a little, little sharper. A little heavier and a little sharper, but so but mine's very sharp. Well, it's a little looser, but very sharp. They made a big change from the F80 to the G80 with the steering. See, again, Make it right. I, I can't even, I've never driven the, yeah, the, the F80. The F80, they over, over synthesized the heaviness of it. You know, they kind of, yep. they kind of made it feel very, very heavy. And uh, a lot of people complained about it because this, really? be, this became the benchmark. Yeah, yeah. And then BMW went back and they said, well, you know what? We're going to make the car lighter steering, quicker response. Right. And, you know, I, oh, I like it better. is such a well-engineered car. What made you actually do away with the F80 so fast? Uh, they ordered the wrong car for me. Make a left. <laughs> what did they do? The car didn't have the right options. What, 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 what it was missing the um, It was missing the adaptive suspension okay. and the what? upgraded audio. And I waited six months for that car. You mean the Harman Kardon? Yeah. The Harman Kardon comes standard on the G80. Yeah. The F80, it didn't. It was optional. That's stupid. Oh, dude, that was almost 10 years ago. Yeah. I ordered that. That was 2014. Wow. God, time flies. Yep. But it's a fun... You can feel it. It's a fun car. You, I can tell you're you're having fun just romping on it. Yeah, it's awesome. Right? Brakes are very underwhelming. I mean, you weren't lying. <laughs> no. I figured that's just... You were just being filled. Like, you bitch and moan about everything. Now, had it, thing, now you, like, had, <laughs> you had the, C, the AMG C43. I did. You didn't like that car. Uh, it was a great car. It had a lot of power. Um, handling wasn't the best. No. You know, uh, it was a beautiful car, very classy. It was white with the black interior. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't do it for it me. It didn't do it for you. It didn't do it see, for this me. car, do you see what I'm talking about? Like, this car has like a fun factor to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even though it's an automatic, but it's like a fun automatic. No, no, it, it, it's, it's, and not again, a... it's a great daily driver. It's a, like I said, I'll say it again, it's a very, very comparable car to the GM yeah. in a lot of ways. It's got a different sound. It's got a different well, look, feel. How, look at it. We hit those bumps. It's planted. Slow down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's the uh, the drive little review of a G80 M3 owner. First time driving an Alfa Romeo, Julia Quadrifoglio. Stay tuned for more content. Stay tuned to the channel. Anybody that's got comments or zone, either one of those, nice post comments. it. Nice po comments. Po post nice it in the comments below if you want to keep the conversation going. I will comment if you say something nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Now, listen, they're, they're all great cars. It really depends on what you want. And uh, like I said, he wanted the manual. So this wasn't even an option. Yeah. You know, and I get it. I would consider something like this next if it doesn't go all electric. Yeah, I don't think they're going to make this car anymore. I think this oh, is it. Oh, Jesus. What's but it's, happening? But it's fun, though, isn't it? But what's happening with the auto industry, though? What's yeah, it's, it's, it's going to the wayside. That's why cars like this and cars like yours are going to be worth more uh -huh. money yeah. in the long run. Oh, this car, this car handled beautifully. Oh, I mean, look God. at this. Look at the way it, it takes oh. this corner. And we're on a we're on a busted road. Yeah. But. So 
What do you think? Yeah, the, the cor it, it definitely corners better than my, my G80. Well, it's a smaller car. Yeah. I would love to drive the M2. Yeah. All right, you know, watch out with the rock over here. Let me drive your cars. This is a nice treat. No, I wanted you to drive it so you could like you could, you could compare it. Yep. I already got I already got the feel for it. You know. You so the, take it on the, so high, the highways. Is, awesome. This is more fun than a G80 around uh, town. Uh, around town, but the G80 is definitely on the highway. The G80 is incredible. Yeah. Well, it's the power band. This thing has a totally different power band.